Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Got our 2012 83 iron sports drip here on the lift today, and we are going to change the oil. I'm not endorsing KNN. I just use their product because it has a little nut on the end. If they want to give me free stuff, I'll endorse their product. Hint, hint, KNN. Anyways, we're going to change out the engine oil and filter on this bike, and we're going to change the primary and trans oil on this. Now, uh, unlike metric or Japanese motorcycles, it's a separate oil for your engine versus for your primary and transmission. On your big twin Harleys, it's three different oils, or you hear people talk about the three hole oil change, but on the Sportster, the primary and the transmission shares the same quart of oil. This is really an easy process. Don't get overthink it. Don't get too intimidated by it. You can do this in your garage or on your driveway, uh, really even with the bike on the kickstand. You may need a friend to hold it up straight at times. But other than that, this is pretty straightforward. You can complete this project. So let's jump right into it and take a look at what we got going on. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to start the bike up. Um, that is because the Harley Sportsters have a dry sump oil system and the oil tank is underneath the seat. When the bike sits, all the oil will drain down into the bottom of the engine case. So therefore, when you try to drain the oil out, you won't actually get it all out. So you need to start up the bike, let it run for a few seconds, wait till the oil is circulating around inside the tank, and you can take the cap off and look down in there and see this, then turn the bike off, then you're ready to start changing the oil. So here we are underneath the back left side of the motorcycle. For reference, this little rubber pad right here on the left side of your screen, this is the bump stop for the kickstand. This is the frame rail, this is the bottom of the primary. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to drain the oil out of it. So you will see on your 12 fuel injected Sportster and most of the fuel injected ones, there's this rubber hose right here and there's a little hose clamp on it. Hopefully, let me get a screwdriver here. There is the hose clamp at the end of the screwdriver. So I'm gonna take a quarter, I'm sorry, 5 16 or eight millimeter socket here and um, nope, that's too large. So it's probably quarter inch, but I guess I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver here. And I'm going to loosen up this hose clamp. Now, do not be surprised if this thing is covered in road grime because it's just kind of hanging out down here. So we're gonna loosen up the hose clamp here until it moves around. And then I'm gonna put the drain pan in place. Then I'm just going to take this hose plug here should be able to just pull it right out the bottom of the hose. Whoop. Pick it up before the pan fills up. And now the oil is draining. If you find the oil is draining slow, you can open up the fill cap and maybe it'll drain a little bit faster. So while the engine oil is draining, we're also going to drain the primary oil. So the primary drain plug is right here on the left side of the screen. So we're gonna move the camera over here a little bit, just like so. And then we're gonna get a 5 8 wrench. So we're gonna take a 5 8 wrench here. And we're gonna break this free. Remember, it's lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, but remember, you're looking at, have to, in order for that to work, you have to imagine looking at the fastener from the bottom. But either way, we have this broke free. And I have the drain pan here ready, so once I get the plug out, I'll be able to slide the drain pan underneath the plug and catch all the oil. There we go. So our transmission oil is draining and our, our engine oil is draining. So we're gonna let all those drain down and it may take a few minutes, but we'll let all those drain down and then uh, then we'll put the plugs back in. In the meantime, move the light here so you can see a little better. In the meantime, we're gonna clean up the drain plugs that came out. Um, there's an O-ring on this drain plug. We're gonna replace the O-ring and uh, also clean up the drain plug that came out of the hose, which is the engine oil. 
Okay, next thing we're looking at is we have to be able to fill the primary and transmission oil. So you can either take this little access panel off here, or you can take the clutch cover off. Now, we're gonna do both, and there's a reason why. We only technically have to take one of them off to put the oil in. Now, it's easier to put the oil in through the clutch cover. There are more screws, but it's also nice because we know we can't overfill it that way. Also, we can check out the seal and everything that's going on. But while we're doing this, we can check on the primary chain tension while we're in here. So we're gonna do that too, because hey, we're doing spring maintenance, why not? So normally this is like a T25 or T27 Torx bit that uh, holds this primary cover on. I hate Torx bits. So therefore I replaced these out with Allen screws a while ago. So it's a quarter 20 Allen screw, quarter 20 by three quarter if you wanna purchase some. I got some stainless button heads. And in this case, it is a 532nd Allen. And we'll just spin all these out of here. And keep the screws in clean location. Once the screws are out, you can just grab this cover and it should pop off of there. Might have to get behind of a screwdriver to break the seal free. There you have it. Your cover comes off. Set that in a clean, safe location. This is your actual seal here, this rubber ring. So give it a good inspection. Make sure it's not damaged in any way. Make sure it doesn't look deteriorated. Oh, also, when you take the cover off, there is this spacer here. This is part of what keeps your clutch adjuster locked in place, and uh, it's only held in by spring pressure and the clutch cover, or derby cover. So be mindful of this, and also keep that in a safe, clean location. But to check the primary tension, you've got this little cover right here with two screws on it. You can take a 532nd Allen wrench and thread the screws out. Now in full disclosure, I already broke these free, so they do just thread right on out of there. Whoops, just hit the camera. Hang on one second there. There we go. Now that it's free, you can take a small screwdriver. Should be able to just pop that free. Give your gasket a quick inspection. Make sure it came off in one piece and it's not damaged. And if it did, you should be able to reuse that. Take a rag, clean up your surface here. So the service manual for this says it should be half inch to five eighths of play on your primary chain tension. Now also make sure your bike is in neutral, which this one is. But what we're looking at is the amount of movement here on the top of your primary chain tension. So you can eyeball it if you want. We're gonna get here with a steel rule or tape measure. And uh, from my vantage point, it's lining up with a three quarter mark and it goes up to inch and a quarter. So therefore, we're right at the half inch mark. So we're sitting good on primary chain tension. If this is too loose, you're gonna hear a bunch of slapping going on. If it's too tight, it'll be hard to shift and hard to find neutral. Plus it can cause things to prematurely wear out. Nobody wants that. So since this is good, you can just keep clean this gasket surface off, put your cover back on, tighten up your screws, and you're ready to go ride. So now we're gonna put the cover back on and it uh, looks like the primary has finished draining oil. So we can stop. Now we're gonna put the cover on and it uh, looks like the primary is finished draining. The primary and transmission's finished draining. So after we put this cover on, we can refill the oil.
make sure everything is clean because everything takes up space, including dirt and oil. So run both of these in, snug each one up first, and then tighten them up. You can torque it to spec if you need to, or just tighten them up really well there. Don't kill them. All right, we're back here underneath the left side of the motorcycle. And uh, our engine oil is still draining a little bit, but our primary is pretty much done. So we have a nice, have a nice clean primary drain plug here, primary slash transmission drain plug. We got a new O-ring on there, and we can just thread this right up in here. Hang on a second. Let's wipe that off really well. You want to make sure you don't accidentally pick up any dirt as you do this and put dirt up inside of there. Now, we can reinstall the drain plug. If I can find the hole. There we go. And if the threads will pick up. There we go. we can just tighten that right up there if you choose if you're unsure you can torque that to spec Cut back in so your primary and your transmission only take one quart or it's like 0.9 something quarts just aim for one quart extra tenth half a tenth of uh, what would be one twentieth of a quart it's not gonna make a difference just put it in there so you cannot overfill your primary. Basically, the fill is considered to the bottom of the hole, approximately. So if you put too much in, it'll just come out the hole where the clutch goes. Now, while we're waiting here, I use 75140 on the primary and the transmission. 75140 gear oil. Always use synthetic because it's a superior lubricant. And if you use gear oil, make sure it has a friction modifier in it, or it might be listed on the packaging just as four limited slip differentials. That means it has the friction modifier in it, which works with the clutch plates, which helps your clutches, your wet clutch, run smoothly. This is probably gonna take a minute. All right, so our entire court is back in there. Now, we're gonna reinstall the clutch cover. Now you wanna make sure you put this jam nut back in place. You also wanna make sure everything is clean. But make sure you put this lock nut back in place or your clutch will go out of adjustment as you ride. And nobody wants that. Just position it to wherever the flats on the nut line up properly and where the hex on the outside also lines up properly. There it is. If you can't get it to stay on there, you can stick a little dab of grease on the back side of this thing. And that grease will kind of help the nut stick to the face of the clutch there. Um, and the grease will just kind of get washed in the oil once the bike's running. But from here, make sure our mating surface is nice and clean. Our gasket's nice and clean and insert it in there. And remember, this has a little notch on it, which is the little bump where the clutch cable goes. So you're gonna wanna line that up as you put that on there. Now also, make sure you put this on evenly. If when you go to push it on, put it on, you put one screw in and you tighten it down then pull the other one in, it can shift sideways and then it can actually roll the seal out of here and then you'll have a leak. And despite the miss, Harleys are not supposed to leak. And if you put good seals in them, they won't leak. So from there, we're going to start in this top screw.
This would be a lot easier if I knew where my Allen wrench was. I just had my hand. There it is. So it's good to have your tools on hand first. Makes things a lot simpler. So I'm going to run that in, but I'm still holding the clutch cover in to make sure it doesn't pop out and go crooked. Snug that one up. All right, so we got two screws in it. It's slightly snug, so that should be enough to at least hold it flat while we get all the other screws in here. Run that one in, lightly snug. Put them in in a crisscross pattern. Now they're all in there, we're going to torque them down in a crisscross pattern. So there, 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 the one behind the foot peg, and then that one. That's it. Our prim primary and transmission oil has been changed. All our covers are back on. This part is good. Now we can finish changing the engine oil. So the next thing we're going to want to do is remove the old oil filter. So before you do this, make sure your drain plug, make sure your oil is done draining. Then move your drain pan up underneath here. Now there's still oil up inside your filter. And uh, they do make a special little tool that, or plastic piece that goes underneath here that will catch the oil. Because uh, you don't really want oil run all over your electro connectors down in here. So you can buy the special little tool. Or you can take a piece of aluminum foil. Slide this piece of aluminum foil up in there. Shove it way back up inside. Position it where it's going to work as a nice little catch and drain, drain funnel, canal, channel, whatever you want to call it. Ideally, it's going to oil will drain in the aluminum foil, drain down out in the pan, <coughs> keeping our electro connectors dry. There's lots of ways to get oil filters off. I have this little special tool that when you twist it, it grabs things. It's kind of cool. You can also use channel locks. Some oil filters have a little nut on the end of it, which is what the one I'm putting on is going to have. But you can put this up on here. And if you set it up on there right, when you lefty loosey the oil filter off of there, this thing should grab it. Just be careful it doesn't smash your aluminum foil funnel in the process. And once you break that free, you should be able to spin your oil filter. Right on off of there. Drain the oil out of your oil filter down into your catch pan. It's probably behind the ratchet strip. Set your oil filter off to the side and properly dispose of that. So now we're ready to reinstall or install a new oil filter. So I have my new oil filter here. Uh, a little plastic film on it. Take that off. Discard of that. Now before you install this filter, you want to put some oil on the seal of this. This will keep this seal from baking to the engine case. So it'll come off easier next time, and also it won't leave any residue on there uh, when you're for your next oil change. Now you can take some clean oil. I'm actually going to use what drained out of here uh, on the aluminum foil there, because uh, it still should be relatively clean. 
just put that little bit of a film uh, up on the seal there. Then we're going to take our aluminum foil right on out of there. And we're going to take our oil filter. And when you put it on there, you want to make sure you go straight with it. You don't want to try and thread it on like this or any crooked angles because you'll cross thread this thing in here. And it's a fine thread and you could have damaged something. So we're going to feed it in here nice and straight. Should thread on with a nice light touch. Now we're going to thread it on right to the point the seal makes contact. And if you look on the box of your oil filter, right here, it should give you some form of instructions on here. Right here. There we are. I hope that comes in focus. So what this basically says is put some oil on the seal, thread it on there until the seal makes contact, and then from the point the seal makes contact, you go plus three quarters to plus one. So from the point the seal makes contact, you'll go an additional three quarters to one full turn. And that should be the proper torque spec. These filters have a nut on the back, which is a 11 16 socket. So seal made contact. So from there, we're gonna go about three quarters of a turn more. Boom. Now we know our oil filter is torqued to spec. Now we're ready to reinstall our drain plug and then fill that bike with new oil. Now we're gonna reinstall the drain plug. This can be a bit challenging because if you just try to put it in here, the hose you know, bounces all over the place. So I'm gonna try and reach in here behind and then slide the drain plug up into the hose. Now, as you do this, you wanna make sure that this drain plug goes all the way in there, but you can see that one didn't. There we go. So there, our drain plug, the shoulder on the drain plug is all the way up to the bottom of the hose. Now we can take a screwdriver and tighten up our hose clamp. You don't have to kill this, but you wanna make sure it's tight enough that little plug doesn't come out. Right about time you feel the, the torque spec kind of, the tightness going up, should be good. If you go too tight, you'll strip out the hose clamp. If you go too loose, drain plug will fall out. Right there, give it a little tug, make sure it won't come out. We're good to go. Wipe up that little bit of oil that's on your lift here. Whoop. Now we're ready to fill our oil tank. All right, last step is going to be to fill the oil. So we're gonna open the drain plug, drain, yeah. Open the oil tank up here. Set that in a clean location. Um, and this is gonna take at least two quarts of oil up to three. Uh, it varies a little bit by how much was in there. Um, should probably end up being somewhere around two and a half. So initially we're just gonna put two quarts in here. There's one. Obviously, you can check it with your dipstick, and you probably have a big enough fill cap you can actually look down in there and see how much oil is in there. But remember, when you start this bike up, it's going to take oil from this tank and pipe it up, pump it up through the system. So the level is going to drop some. So we'll take another one here. Make sure it's all drained out there. All right. Um, I'm just gonna go with the next half a quart because we have room in the storage tank. You might wanna start with two, but I know it's gonna take at least two and a half just because I've done this before. So I'm actually looking down inside the tank to make sure I don't overfill it. All right, so there's about two and a half that's in it right now. Now, from here, we're gonna open the garage door, and then we're gonna start the bike up and let it run. Open 
door so we don't get all fumed out. Make sure your bike's in neutral. Fire it up. So that's all been checked out. I'm gonna reinstall our dipstick. Twist, push down, take it back out, and we're gonna check our oil. And look at that. We're almost all the way up our little knurled spot there, that knurled rough spot. Uh, I'm gonna put a splash bitch more in there just to top it all the way off. Uh, but that level right there is pretty good. You could actually be good to go with that. I'm going to give it that wee little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more than that. So that's going to be just shy of three quarters there. I'm sorry, just shy of three quarts of oil. About two and three quarters. I'll put it back down in. Oh. All the way down in there, all the way back out. Check it again. All right, Oop, dripping our oil everywhere. But as you can see, we're right up to the fill line there. So we're good to go. Now, I'm gonna take this thing for a ride. Or it's my wife's bike, maybe she'll take it for a ride. Either way. But after you ride around the neighborhood a little bit, check the oil again to make sure your level is still good and you didn't blurp any air bubbles out of somewhere and affect the level. That's all I got.